Welcome back to part four of this series. I'm going to discuss now how to get DNA sequences from a particular region in the window of the browser or from a gene of interest. And I'm going to talk about how to search uh, that sequence against the genome by DNA or protein sequence using the BLAT tool. And then I just want to talk briefly about comparison between the HD38 assembly, which we've been using so far, and the more default assembly HD19, which is still kind of the current default assembly, even though it's older. To get DNA sequences of the region that you're currently viewing in the genome browser, you go to the View menu, and you go to DNA. You'll notice that, if I go back really quick, you see that the window is on the SOD1 gene again, which we've been looking at. So I'm going to DNA, and it says get DNA for the position that is shown in the window. Under sequence retrieval options, you can add extra bases upstream and downstream if you wish. And then you have some formatting options where you can go all uppercase, all lowercase, you can mask repeats, you can get reverse complement, etc. So I will say get DNA. And now you see that you get the raw FASTA file, where you have the FASTA header and then the raw DNA sequence below it. And this, is, this covers the entire window that we were just viewing. Now let me go back. The other way to get DNA is to click on the gene itself in the RefSeq genes track and select genomic sequence from assembly. Now here you can select different options. You can have upstream bases, you can have only five prime UTR exons, only coding uh, translated exons, etc. So I'll turn off five prime and three prime, and I'll turn off introns, and I'll say one faster record per gene. And I'll ask for that. Okay, and so there's the SOD1 gene, exons only, with no UTRs. I'll go ahead and select that and copy it. And then I'll just click back. And I'll click back again and back one more time to get back to the genome browser. So that's how you get DNA for sequences that you're interested in. Now if you want to search that DNA, you're going to use the BLAT tool. BLAT is found under the Tools menu. It's the first option. And BLAT is designed to quickly find sequences of 95% or greater similarity of length 25 bases or more. And you can read more about it down here in this section. So let's go ahead and copy that sequence from SOD1. Okay, there it is. And then we're going to search the mouse genome to see if we can find a corresponding gene in the MM10 assembly will let the query type be DNA and we'll click Submit. Now you can see that there are a number of results here and Blatt tells you something about how good they are. They're ranked by score. Now the header and the columns are offset a bit but this is the score column. So let's look at the first hit. You can look at it in the browser or you can get some more details about it. You can also see things like the query size, the percent identity, the chromosome that the query that the hit was found on, the strand, start and end positions, and finally the span. You can see that in the top three queries with the best scores in the 200s, two of them are only 400 and 10, 415 base pairs long, and one is 5,000 base pairs long. So something suspicious is going on here. So let's evaluate the first hit, see how that looks. Okay, keep in mind this is MM10 now, so this is a completely different assembly, and it's not entirely clear what's going on, so let's zoom out by tenfold. Okay, now you can see what's happened here is that we've actually found a pseudogene for the SOD1 gene, a retrotransposed version, right here. If we click through, you can see that the source gene is the Mus musculus superoxide dismutase 1, but it is this is a pseudogene. And that would explain why it's so short. So let's go back 
back again and look at the second hit the longer much longer hit ah here we go so now you can see you found the sod1 gene in mouse this is in fact the mouse homologue of that gene now i want to go back to the gateway page and I just want to talk about briefly HG19, which is still the most widely used default assembly. So I'll select it here, and let's look at the same position as we have been for HG38, the SOD1, and we'll go through. Okay, now right away you can notice that there are more annotation and data tracks in HG19 than there are on by default in HG38, and that's because there's much more data available. Extra tracks that are not in HD38 include publications that tell you something about sequences in scientific articles, uh, the human ESTs track, there's an extra transcription factor um, chip seek data track. So there's a lot more going on here, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't introduce it in the beginning. Now, if we look down at the track controls, you can see as well that there are dozens more tracks available to look at and data to digest. There's a lot of expression data, for example, far more regulation data, more variation data, and more comparative genomics data. So ultimately, you want to become familiar with HD19 and uh, be comfortable working in it as well because most of the data you'll be interested in will probably be found here for the foreseeable future. Okay, that's all for part four. Join me for part five when I'll discuss how to convert and compare between HD19 and HD38, something that you may need to do as you work with data. A way to save your work as you've browsed through the genome browser and selected a view that you want. Instead of having to go back and do all that work again, there's a way to save it and come back to it. And I'll talk about that. And I will talk about generating figures for your publications.